Alright, so let me tell you about The Devil's Backbone, which is directed by Guillermo del Toro, and after watching it, I think that it is probably one of his best movies. Uh, it trumps a lot of the other stuff that I've seen him create, uh, even Hellboy, and it's probably one of the most important movies that I think anybody could sit down and watch uh, as I think about this. Um... This is a brilliant movie that I really want to kick my own ass for, uh, not for always knowing about it, but just never having sat down and watched it sooner than I have. Um, this, uh, the best way to explain this is, uh, if you've watched Hellboy or you've watched Pan's Labyrinth, think of this movie as the prototype for both of those movies but just without all the fantastical elements to it. Um, and uh, I, I think the closest thing that I can compare it to, because this came out a couple of years after Hearts and Atlantis did, and I think that this really works a whole lot better at trying to examine what uh, Innocence is as opposed to what Hearts and Atlantis did, and it just kind of focused more on story and less on... Uh, considering a philosophical question. Um, Del Toro says that this is his uh, most personal film, and when I sit down and watch it, I understand why, and when you uh, listen to the stories about what he talks about what's happening in his life at this time, uh, it really adds a lot more of a level of uh, intensity to this movie, and uh, a lot more of reflection, which is uh, needed by the viewer when he's sitting down and watching this movie. Um, there's a lot of good stuff to it. Uh, basically, this movie is kind of a ghost story, both in a metaphorical and a literal sense. Uh, there's this kid named Carlos who gets dropped off at an orphanage in uh, somewhere in Spain during the last part of uh, the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s and uh, his father has been killed in the battle and uh, this is usually where the orphans go and it's kind of a place of desperation for a lot of people um, the man who runs the place or actually the the man and the woman who run the place uh, are trying to uh, help fund the uh, the rebels in this war against... I, I'm actually not entirely familiar with the Spanish Civil War. I had read up on this uh, before I tried to do this review, and a lot of it I've forgotten now. But um, basically, uh, Casares, who runs... or who helps run the orphanage, is trying to help support uh, the rebels in this war. Uh, and there's a lot of you know, kind of the casualties of war, and there's a lot of heavy stuff in this that's kind of examined, kind of like in Saving Private Ryan. Not with the soldiers uh, fighting in the war, actually, and considering what the hell of war is, but just more of... Imagine the movie kind of focusing in on that uh, on that French family that they found in uh, Saving Private Ryan before Vin Diesel got killed. Uh, it, it really... It really talks about what happens uh, to your innocence if you're brought up in a really bad place and just how uh, fucking cruel that the world can be to you and what your loss of innocence, depending on where you choose to go as you uh, try to grow up and either become a better person or you just find yourself becoming absolutely pathetic, which happens in this movie. Um... The character pieces in this movie are really good. Uh, Carlos is explored quite well. Um, Kisaris and Carmen are explored real well. Uh, there's a boy named uh, Jaime who kind of bullies Carlos to start out with. But after the kid kind of stands up for him a couple of times, they become really good friends. And um, there's some real negatives examined in this movie, especially with um, the groundskeeper who is uh, strictly out for greed in this movie. Um, this film, because like, uh, there's a point in this movie to where 
uh, he goes and he betrays a lot of the people that helped run the orphanage. And uh, he, he, he causes the deaths of a lot of people there. And there's a point to where you kind of find yourself hating this character a lot. But then there's a point to where it gets towards the conclusion of the movie that he sits down and he examines what he's done. And why you don't condone what he does, you feel a great deal of sympathy for him, which is a really good job that this uh, performance has done and what this movie has done as well. Um, with Jacinto, uh, because his name is Jacinto, just think of uh, a much better character exploration uh, with uh, Theon Greyjoy from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, they do a really good job with this. Um... To kind of answer the question about as far as they're saying that this is a, a ghost story in a sense, uh, the the literal ghost story that happens in this is very uh, much a background piece, it's a secondary plot that's done, because uh, from the moment that Carlos arrives at the orphanage, he starts seeing this ghost of a kid who was there named Santi, and uh, there's a little bit of murder mystery involved with how he wound up there, uh, and then there's kind of a bigger picture where they examine, and in uh, a Hellboy kind of fashion to open up the movie, they ask, uh, are ghosts real? Are we actually living people, or are we just uh, ghosts of people that once were? And it, it kind of addresses uh, that existential thought in uh, a fashion for living people, which is really good. Uh, especially the, with the uh, the symbology that they use um, when they sit there and talk about you know how war changes even if you aren't there on the front lines. Because um, there's uh, there was one night that a bunch of planes had come over uh, the orphanage and there's a bomb that drops right in the middle of it that uh, Santi sees and uh, it, it winds up being a dub but it just kind of sits out there. And it serves as a reminder of your mortality. And there's a lot of these questions that they keep uh, answering and going into that uh, I really enjoyed in this movie. Um, it's a very simple story plot-wise, which is a lot of what Del Toro's movies are. But it's a really good examination that I could, you know, just sit here and go on and on about. But... Um, it's it's a movie that you need to see to understand uh, what it's talking about. Um, bottom line is, if you can find this movie, I would highly, highly recommend that you do. Uh, even if you're not into ghost stories, uh, it is kind of a secondary nature in this. There's a lot better examination of characters in this. Um... It's just a really good movie. I really can say nothing more about it and do it justice. You just have to watch it.